Refillable gas bottles and tanks. There are a lot of people like us who've already got them fitted to our vans, but what if you're new to motorhoming or you've got a new van and you haven't made the decision yet, you haven't got them fitted, are they still worth getting, especially with the current shortages and issues in finding them? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Hey, I'm Kat and welcome to Wandering Bird. On this channel, we share tips and tricks for motorhome and camper van owners to help you make the most of your time on the road. Today we're answering a question which was asked in the Wandering Bird Facebook group from Harry and he asked I'm getting my first motorhome in October. Currently I've arranged to have two gas low refillable bottles fitted. However, there seems to be less and less locations to refill in the UK. I'm wondering if this is the right option for the future. Any comments on advice? Well, firstly, Harry, great question. Thank you for asking it. Secondly, there's no right answer to this, as with lots of things in motorhoming, but let me share our thoughts so that you can then make up your own mind. And to avoid confusion, I'm talking about for cooking and for heating, not for powering the vehicle. This is all for living in the van rather than moving forward. So let's start with, in my opinion, the easy one. If you're planning on doing most of your motorhoming in Europe, and we're not gonna mention the C word, we will be able to do motorhoming in Europe again. In fact, I think today the rules have just been announced to change, hopefully from around the 19th of July, that the quarantine when you're coming back into the UK if you've been double vaccinated will be reduced. But we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole today, so let's move on. If you're planning on doing most of your motorhoming or camper vanning in Europe when you can, I would definitely look at getting refillable gas bottles or a tank, and we'll talk about that shortly. A, they're so much cheaper, they're so much easier to find, but the biggest problem that you've got, you cannot have a UK gas bottle system, take it to Europe and exchange it for a foreign bottle, whatever country you're in, any of them, and expect it to fit onto a UK gas system. That's a mistake that we made very early on in our motorhoming life. We ended up in France. We had two UK exchangeable bottles um, and yeah, they didn't fit any of the ones in France or in Germany or in Spain because they have totally different connections. And then to do that, you would need, I think there's three different types of pigtails. You then have to attach the pigtail to your system. And then you've got this whole situation where you have to go and sign a new contract because they work in the exact same way as they do in the UK. So you have to go sign the contract. You have to pay a deposit for the bottle as well as then pay for the price of the gas inside the bottle. You're then gonna be left with an extra bottle because you've got your two UK bottles. You'll have to buy the foreign ones. So then you've got three and what do you do with that so if you're going to leave it you're going to lose your deposit in the UK it's a bit of a mess and I definitely wouldn't recommend you rocking up into Europe with two bottles if you're planning on buying an exchangeable bottle over in Europe leave one of your UK bottles at home so you're just traveling with one and then you can buy one when you're over there but of course if you're traveling around it's fine if you're staying in one spot I guess because you're in one spot you can use that to exchange as you go but if you're planning on traveling around for each new location you're going to need to pay a new deposit um, and get a new bottle. Even if you swap them over and leave one at the new station, you're still paying that deposit because it's their bottle. And that's a really, really expensive way to get gas. So I don't recommend you do that, which is why if you are planning on spending a lot of time in Europe, refillable is so much easier. An important thing to remember is that not every country in Europe has refillable gas stations. Denmark doesn't have very many. Sweden doesn't have very many, but it is still possible to have a refillable gas system and just fill up on the countries around as you're traveling. I'll go on to talking about what to do if you're going to be spending most of your time in the UK based shortly, but let me just quickly touch on LPG tanks. When this question was asked, I put up a poll in the Wandering Bird Facebook group because I was interested to see what everybody else did apart from just us. It's good to get a range of people's opinions. And I was fascinated how many people have got an LPG tank permanently fitted. And again, we're not talking about LPG to move the vehicle, we're just talking about LPG to you know, power your cooking and your heating and stuff while in the living areas. But lots of people have got an LPG tank fitted. Now, the huge advantage of getting an LPG tank fitted rather than bottles is that you can obviously carry more gas. If you're planning on using the Euroton in the future, you can take an LPG tank that is for habitation use only. I believe the maximum of one tank size is 47 kilos, and I think the maximum in total gas you're allowed to carry is 50 kilos. Do check that please on the Eurotunnel website, but I'm pretty sure those figures are right. Um, but that's a lot bigger. I mean, we carry in our van an 11 kilo and a six kilo bottle, so that's 17. So being able to carry even 47 kilos, that's a huge difference. Of course, you have to factor in your payload and whether you can carry that amount of gas. And if you don't understand payload and how it all works, 
I'll put a video link up here somewhere which will help explain that to you a little bit better. However, it's important to realise that not every van or motorhome can get an LPG underslung tank fitted. Um, if you can, it's great because you can clear up your gas locker, have a whole extra lockable exterior locker fitted. There was a lot of locks in that sentence, but go with me. Um, so you get this whole locker back, which is great. But of course, if you can't fit it in underneath, some people even pay to get like their bathroom moved or the pipework moved and it can get really, really expensive. And it is in general, more expensive to get a tank fitted than get refillable bottles fitted. One of the reasons we went for bottles rather than a tank was so that we could, if we needed to, we carry the pigtails for our gas bottle system, that we could buy an exchangeable bottle as we're traveling if we need to, especially when we go to somewhere like Morocco, which is a plan for sometime in the future, then we can just attach a bottle to our gas system and use it whilst we're in country if we have to buy one rather than being able to find refillable gas. Okay, let's go back to the original question whether or not it's worth getting refillable gas bottles or a tank fitted if you're planning on spending most of your time motorhoming in the UK. Five years ago, I would have said absolutely it's a done deal. It's definitely cheaper. If you use your motorhome a lot rather than just a week a year, but if you use it a lot like we do and we use it, especially during the winter months where you use a lot for heating, it will probably pay for itself. We reckon ours paid for itself within about a year and that was using it almost full time. So it definitely pays for itself if you use the van a lot. Now, of course, if you don't use it a lot or if you always use campsites, when you go on and you use electric hookup and you use the electric for your heating rather than using the gas system, you're not gonna use a huge amount of gas. In which case, it's probably not worth you paying for a refillable system. This only works or only becomes cost effective if you're going to spend a lot of time during the winter and a lot of time off grid. Now I say off grid, I don't necessarily mean wild camping or wild park ups, but even camping in a, a site like a field or a smaller site which doesn't have electric hookups. If you prefer those types of sites and use them a lot, then it's definitely worth having a cheaper way of powering your gas system. And LPG still does that. However, it's definitely become harder to find places which still have an LPG system. I'm not saying it's impossible. We have managed to find several around where we're based. So there's one in Southampton, there's a couple up near Gatwick, and yes, they are a bit of a drive. And what we've got really good at doing is, she says, you watch us run out of gas now. What we try to do is keep much better eye on our gas limits, especially in the UK, so that we can fill up when the system's like half full, whereas before we'd probably let it run down a little bit lower than that. But now we try and fill up, and if we find an LPG station, we pretty much always fill up when we're there. The other thing we've started doing is phoning service stations in advance, especially if we're detouring specifically to find um, a station, and we find them using the mylpg.eu um, app or the website, and that's great. It's it can be a little bit hit and miss in the reliability. There are lots of places listed around our area that still say there are services available, even though we've updated them ourselves and said they're not. Like the Portsmouth Calagas Centre still says it's got a pump and it doesn't. We went there, they asked. We've updated the MyLPG thing and it still isn't showing, at least it wasn't last time I checked. Um, so I definitely take the information, especially in the UK with a pinch of salt. Europe seems to be a little bit more reliable. But what we've started doing is most of the places listed have got the phone number or you can just Google the phone number for the service station and literally just phone it. I'm amazed, every single one of them has answered so far. And you can just ask them if they've got LPG. Some of them on the My LPG app says temporarily out of stock, but you don't necessarily know when that's been updated. So if you phone them, they might've had a delivery since that point, or they might have no longer have the gas and you've saved yourself driving out of your way. So that's how we find stations. And it has been a way that every time we do a, a trip to a different area, we'll tend to find an LPG station and go and fill up then. That's how we're dealing with it. However, if you live somewhere remote or you prefer to stay somewhere remote, like the Scottish Highlands, although I can't tell you off the top of my head if there's an LPG station up there or not. Um, but if you prefer to travel in really remote areas finding an lpg station is going to be tough the places where they seem to still exist are the big hubs the big cities places where there's a lot of cars st still use lpg for propulsion 
if you're in very remote, very rural areas, you're gonna probably struggle. I'm not saying there are none anywhere in the UK that are rural, but there are very few. If that's the case, you're probably going to be better sticking with an exchangeable gas bottle or doing what we're doing, getting a refillable system fitted, but also then getting an exchangeable bottle that you can use as you travel. And we are seriously debating doing one of each in the UK. At the moment, we haven't got to a point where we've been really worried about gas, and it's probably gonna be a last minute thing when we really, really need gas, and then we have to go buy a bottle and hook that up to our system. And what we would then have to do is travel around with a third bottle. So we'd have the exchangeable bottle and our, one of our, probably our big refillable one in the gas locker. And then we'd have our small refillable bottle, which would obviously not be hooked up to the system. And we'd have to store that somewhere and strap it down. And I don't like the idea of traveling with a gas bottle strapped down somewhere. So I don't quite know what we'd do with that, which again is an issue. And that's why we've not done it yet. Also, it seems to be that there are some real difficulties finding bottles, like exchangeable bottles at the moment, especially people have been complaining in the group about things like safe fill and how much harder they've got to find. So just because you're using exchangeable bottles doesn't mean it's going to be easy. However, I do believe in general that at the moment it's easier to find exchangeable bottles than it is to find LPG stations. Whether that changes in the future or not, I'm not sure. If you do want to spend a lot of time off grid, then learning how to deal with your waste, both water and your toilet, and also how to find water as you travel is going to be really useful. And you might find this video really helpful on how to do that. Alternatively, if you want to plan your next trip to Europe, there's a lot to know now that the UK has left the EU. So this video will definitely help you get your head around those. If you're new to the channel and want to get more motorhoming tips and tricks, then by all means hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.